Hey teachers, welcome back to another video here on Vestal's 21st Century Classroom. A few months ago, I created a video all about different addition strategies. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some different subtraction strategies that are not standard algorithm. If your students are struggling with subtraction, this is the video to watch. Now, if you're like me, standard algorithm was probably the only subtraction strategy that you were taught in elementary school. And throughout my years as an educator, I've seen that certain students struggle with standard algorithm. And what I find is the more strategies that I teach them for solving subtraction problems, the easier time they have with it. So the first strategy that I want to show you is called compensation. Now I do wanna preface that the compensation strategy is not great with every type of subtraction problem. I like to teach my students this strategy when it comes to subtracting across zeros. So like you see, I have a problem here, 20,000 minus 2,256. Now, if students were to solve the problem as it is, it would require a lot of borrowing, which is where some students get very hung up. So by using compensation, we can make a little adjustment to one of the numbers that is going to make this problem so much easier to solve. So with this strategy, all you're going to do is you are going to either add or take away a few numbers to make this bigger number much easier to subtract from. So in this case, if we subtract one from 20,000, we turn this problem into 19,999 minus 2,256. Now this is a much easier problem for students to solve because they no longer have to borrow from any numbers. So now they can just quickly go through and subtract. Now the key with compensation is after they do their subtraction, they have to go back to this number here that they either add it or subtract it initially and use the opposite operation. Now what I mean by that is because we subtracted one initially, we needed to go ahead and add that one back in. So we're just going to do that down here to get the final answer. Now, if I had added one to this number, I would subtract it here. So just remember you're using the opposite operation and you can see this was so much easier to do compared to subtracting across all of those zeros. So I have two more subtraction strategies that I wanna share with you in this video. But before I do that, I just briefly want to share with you a teaching resource that I think will change your life if you are teaching addition and subtraction right now. And that is my addition and subtraction unit, which literally includes everything that you need to plan and teach your addition and subtraction lessons. In this video, I'm showing you three strategies for subtraction. The unit teaches six addition and five subtraction strategies. You'll find over 250 pages with detailed lesson plans, worksheets, games and centers, exit tickets, assessments, and so much more. Three versions of this unit are available for each upper elementary grade level. We have addition and subtraction within 9,999, addition and subtraction within 99,999, and addition and subtraction within 999,999. All versions are linked in the description of this video. The second subtraction strategy that I want to show you is how to subtract using expanded form. And this is exactly what it sounds. You're gonna rewrite each of the numbers in the problem using expanded form, and you're gonna solve this way. This is a great way to incorporate place value into your subtraction lessons. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean with this problem right here. I'm gonna rewrite both of these numbers in expanded form, and I'm gonna stack them vertically as if I were writing a subtraction problem. So 
So you can see that I have set this up just like I would a regular subtraction problem. The only difference is instead of writing the numbers in standard form, I'm writing them in expanded form, and now I'm going to subtract by each place value. Now, if you run into an instance where you need borrowing, you're gonna do it very similar to the way that you would if you were solving using standard form. So in this case, I cannot subtract five from one. So I'm going to borrow from the next place value. This will change to 70. And then I'm going to put a one in front of the number. Now I will just go ahead and subtract each place value. Okay. After you have subtracted by each place value, we want to go back from expanded form to standard form. So now we're just going to go ahead and add each of those place values together. And that was how we used expanded form to subtract. With the last subtraction strategy that I'm gonna show you, I'm going to show you how to subtract larger numbers using a number line. This is also sometimes referred to as counting backwards to subtract. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to draw a large open number line on a piece of paper. And I suggest that you make it big. Tell students to make it big so that way they have lots of space to work. Now on the far right side of the number line, you're gonna draw a line and you are going to write the bigger number that we are subtracting from. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to subtract by place value. So this is another great way to subtract by place value and also to review that expanded form. So let me show you what I mean. First, we're going to subtract by the 10 thousands place. So I usually like to draw a little jump and write what the 10 thousands place represents. So we're subtracting 20,000. So we'll take 20,000 away from this larger number. Next, we're going to subtract from the thousands place. And I usually like to make the jump a little bit smaller each time because the place values are getting smaller. So we'll make it a little bit smaller, make our jump, check to see what the place value value is. So that's 1000. And then we're going to subtract just 1000 from this number. Now we're going to repeat this place or we're going to repeat this process for the hundreds place, the tens place and the ones place. So we can speed this up a little bit. And like I said, try to make each of your jumps a little bit smaller because those place values are getting smaller. It's a great discussion that you can be having with students about place value as you're working. So if your students are feeling overwhelmed by these bigger numbers, using this number line strategy that's both very visual and it breaks those numbers down into smaller parts can be helpful for those students who are feeling very overwhelmed by the process. All right, so there you have it. Those are three of my favorite subtraction strategies that are not standard algorithm. Like I said before, if you have a student who is really struggling with addition, I think if you show them some of these other strategies, it's going to help them grasp the concept a little bit better and not feel quite so overwhelmed with those bigger numbers that they're subtracting with. If you have any tips or strategies or ideas for teaching subtraction with bigger numbers, go ahead and let us know down in the comments. The comments are a great way for us to collaborate and share ideas from all around the world together. And last but not least, if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel, Vestal's 21st Century Classroom, I would greatly appreciate it taking the time to do those two things. It enables us to keep creating free content here on this channel for you and other educators around the globe. So until next time, happy teaching.